presentation is the Secrets of Coaching World Class Women, presented by Dr. Dean Hines. He is a sports psychologist for Team USA, and he's worked with our national team for several years. And also, Team USA assistant head coach Kim Terrell Kearney, and she will be, be in the female part of this presentation. So, Secrets of Coaching World Class Women. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. I'm just so relieved that Kim will be in the female part of it. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. One fear that was delayed right off the bat. That's good. So, uh, hey, hello. Hi. 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 We'll start with that. Um, we, uh, we have a wind sprint in time here. Uh, 90 minutes to just handle a ton. And I want to. Uh, by way of introduction, I've been introduced. I've had a chance to work with uh, several of you personally in, in a lot of different roles and contexts um, as friends and as colleagues and, and some as clients. And actually, uh, I was talking to Kim, and we can in just a moment, but I guess for my part of it, I've never seen anything in any sport, we we're talking about this, where um, sometimes I guess a coach, but never in my in any of my reading and any of my experience as a sports psychologist, presented with somebody who had the relationship that we have. We started as, uh, with Kim's permission, because confidentiality is a huge deal, but with Kim's permission, uh, we started as a client and sports psychologist. We worked together for uh, many years, and we transitioned uh, out of that role, which is a tricky thing to do. <coughs> you know somebody in one context and then to go to another. Uh, we became colleagues as, uh, uh, what's that? More volume? I thought you, I thought you meant be taller. <laughs> Challenging for me. All right. Is this is this taller and louder? All right. If you can't hear something out back, I, I have another gear even after this. <laughs> but, so told Kim, she said you you might want to wear the microphone. I said I'll hurt people. <laughs> So we got, we got to know each other in this way, and then uh, Kim coached at Delaware State and then Team USA, and we got to be colleagues, as she brought me in to work with her and her team. And out of that was a natural progression into a friendship that's been enduring. And so uh, I thought in terms of talking about coaching women and world-class women, that this was not only a unique opportunity and perspective, but I don't even know that it's been done before. And the strength of our relationship, the strength of our coaching, our coaching, whatever it is we have, has been the relationship. So I guess as part of today, one of the invitations is, if there's something that you want to know or ask or inquire about, sort of no rules. We do get to say, well, I don't know that I'd want to answer that one, but uh, uh, whatever you would have on your slate for today about coaching, coaching women, rules, clarifying rules, several of you, lots of people here have coached. Um, their wives, their husbands, their kids, and trans both transitioning roles and sort of working within the, the context of the relationship of your role cues. That said, that's sort of my, my piece as I've worked in, in some different places. I said Kim has her own resume, which we typically are uncomfortable talking about. I don't know. We we'll talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday, and I guess that was under the impression that he was going to. Oh. Like you're uncomfortable doing this. I didn't realize that I was. She's done a lot of stuff in the game. Okay. So, there's a couple of uh, a couple of U.S. Open titles in there. There's a Queen's title in there. There's a Hall of Fame induction. Um, what's the thing in L.A. that was my favorite thing? What's that one got? So there's a title that many of you are unaware of. What is it called? Right. It was a regional title. It was a worldwide women's title. Western Women's Professional. What is it called? Western Women's Professional. WWP. And the reason this is one of my favorite, my favorite titles that she has, uh, uh, this is the one I have on my wall, that, that's hers, um, <laughs> is a professional tournament that came down in all, uh, you know, all the tour women who were in the area that many of you would recognize were there. But they did this tournament right after a children's birthday party down in the lane. Right? <laughs> and, and the kids, you know, much as Dell talked about breaking down the lanes properly, <laughs> <laughs> it 
it didn't, it didn't work out just like that. <laughs> I would love to see your, your cable graph. <laughs> this is how the lanes broke down. Um, and they didn't even clean like the frosting off the approaches. And my favorite piece of this tournament was the distinction between a lot of players saying, this is what's supposed to be, and louder, you know, like what, th this shouldn't be happening. As opposed to what we did with the middle game, which is, this is what's happening. And the distinction between, I think, winners and champions and normal humans is that normal humans say this is what's supposed to be, and champions say this is what is. And I better take it and go with it. It's my favorite one of your titles. Um, beyond even some of the majors, because it was such an adaptation to such an adverse environment, and it was done without fanfare, without TV, without a lot of things, but, but with all the parts that any, any victory, any title would Some about individuals and just blend where you can, like I said, translate back and forth. But we would never coach a team. Like I went out to, to anywhere, uh, Wichita or wherever, or Dell State or any of these places, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the room like this. Because the, all of you have a spectacular view of the back of everyone else's head, and there's no sense of being in the same space. And you can't coach women from my point of view unless everybody feels like they're. And so what we would do ever so subtly is shift, because it's a big project to shift the room, but what I'd invite people to do, or we'd invite people to do, is to angle these desks, which is simply to take the desk where you are, and instead of it being like this, put it at about a 15 or 20 degree angle, so you have some sense that everybody's in the same room. Now, I'm gonna have you freeze here for a moment before we even move. What makes it a workshop is that you have your reaction. And some people go, cool, we're doing something different. Some people are irked because they have to move and lunch happens. Um, <laughs> some people are curious about the experience. Some people are bored. Some people are angry. Whatever it is, there is no response that, that's wrong. But it, as was in the last of those slides, we say one of the highest forms of bullying intelligence flat out is the ability to observe without judgment. The ability to observe without judgment, to go, this is what I'm thinking, check that out. Here's how the lanes play, check that out. That's what the ball did, check that out. Whatever it is. And so we're going to move the room. You'll have your reaction, and you get to go, look at me. I have this thought or this feeling. Whether it's fun or whether it's not, it's yours. It's yours, because if we made it happen, you'd all have the exact same one. But you'll have yours. So that said, if we can take a full 20 seconds, and just angle your row by 20 degrees. <laughs>
show, thank you. Fast, fast. Thoughts, feelings, experiences, any reaction to adjustment in the room? Okay. Okay. What, what happened as we asked in their request? Improvement. What's that? Is it improvement? Yeah. We were improving. Yeah. All right. Everybody want to get a piece? Sure. I don't think the front view is the front view. Yeah. Yeah. The front view is better than the back view. Yeah. 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 Certainly in a dog pack, that's true. <laughs> 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 um, any other experiences you had right off the bat? Thoughts, feelings, reactions? Everybody yeah. made eye contact. They had to interact. There's, you've got to, all of a sudden, there's, you're not in your own space. And we talked a lot about the distinctions of feeling like you're in community, feeling like you're in a relationship. By the, by the end today, the thought of going back to the tables as they were will be aversive to you, I would think. Actually, it would be aversive in any event. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I talk a lot about my experiences working with Team USA, and I'm probably on my 10th year in the program, and, you know, thankfully Rod brought me on when I was pretty, just right out going on a tour, worked with the kids for at least six of those years. The last four, I've been um, brought on as one of the assistant coaches for the adult team, which is a, a big transition for me, because, you know, as you can see in the picture, you know, most of, of, of these players are my counterparts, they're my friends, they've been my competitors, here we are, I'm having to kind of change gears and be different with them, which was tricky to me. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And so, you know, I think a lot about just my experiences working with the team and what I did at Delaware State and just kind of observing we did and team bowling because I feel like that's where really I learned how to play. And so it's near and dear to my heart. And I, I'm really sensitive about how I think it should look or how at least I thought it should going into being a head coach. And, and it, it's very, very different and it's tricky. And I think we all can use some help in trying to maneuver through working with different personalities and in particular female personalities. So as we, we sort of run through this, Dean and I have, have talked over the last couple of months about how we wanted this to look. And Which for me was like pulling a hamstring, like we prepared ahead of time. Everything we do is meant to parallel everything we do. You say if you take a sample of the DNA from the toe, it should be the same as the DNA from <coughs> the hair or the ear or whatever it is. And what we've just done is also what we would do with the, with the athletes that we work with, which is what have you come here to create? What have you come here to, what have you come here to do? And uh, I love that we're following the <coughs> team presentation because you know, we're talking about the different cultures. Like, why would you come to this program? What have you come here to have happen? But we also have that for today. And we're not going to record everybody, so there should be some overlap. But if we can take sort of the hit parade of anything that you'd be willing to sort of blurt out fast, we're going to take very little time in this part. Um, it's hopefully not very long. <laughs> so anybody, what, what did you record? Networking. Please don't give me an opening line. It always you can only turn up badly for me. Well, we're going to be changing team unity.
understanding and coaching different, uh, difficult, difficult, difficult personalities. The secrets, which, and they will still remain secret, but only a hundred of us will know them. <laughs> Nobody share outside of this room the secrets which will be revealed. Yes, I, I just came up with one thing I've always struggled with. This is how to teach and educate or train the emotional management side and the technical side of teaching women and women's teaching. It's a really interesting thing. I, I, because you're talking, as long as, as, long as um, Coach Gordon uh, talked about brain science, there's a different, not gonna, we're not going to do neuropsychology today, but there are different parts of the brain involved in the critical analytic part, and the deeper part, the engine, it's called the limbic system, when the emotions get kicked on. And the mythology of <coughs> working with people is that just express it and get it out, whatever it is, and it's exactly wrong which is your brain works like kindling. And if you give fuel to the emotional hit that happens like after a, a bad shot, rough shot, bad result, opponents, Brooklyn, whatever it is, you look at someone else's backup strike mm -hmm. and the reaction, and if you feed it, you, you're putting twigs and then, and then larger sticks on a fire that's gonna inflame because once the midbrain, without going into it too much, lights up, that engine becomes an engine. It becomes a bull that starts to charge, and it has to run longer before it, it lets out. And so one of the things that we teach is an emotional reactivity, like what's the limit, how long, and how much. Otherwise, you've got a problem. And we drop about 20 IQ points as soon as that thing flames on fully, the midbrain. So great. I'm already coming on. Anything else on the, on the lineup? Yes? Kids by bullers who want to change. Oh. Awesome, to get people to desire change. If you just give them enough knowledge, they will. Come on, no, that's, I'm kidding. That's not, that, that, that worked there at all. Um, yeah. Yes? Okay. What motivates the high level woman versus the high enough level man? To, to want to be at that point. What, what motivates them? Motivate? The high level female player versus, versus the high level male player. Versus the high level male player. Different motivations. That's interesting. I thought about it. You never have really a workshop that says coaching men. I don't know if it's politically incorrect or, or, or why people. But coaching women. Oh, yeah, let's go to coaching women. Coaching men. I've never seen one. Uh, go ahead. How to show them how to get out of their own way to, un, to free them from their minds so that their bodies will fall. <laughs>
experience that there's a lot of girls who are motivated more by whether she's been successful in front of her parents rather than for herself. It's almost like on a shot by shot basis, it's to, you know, you know, I don't want to disappoint my father, my mother, something like that. How do I get women to bolt for themselves? Really important, and we're jumping a slide we have on like so I'll just say this in terms of quotables. To the degree that your approval and acceptance needs run you with your coach or your parents, you're in bowling jail. To the degree to which your approval and acceptance needs from your coach or your parents run you, you're in bowling jail. That will be your missed makeable spare. Does that make sense? We'll come back to that. But something they just want to jump on in that moment. Because they had a neuron fire and I have to. Yes, yeah. The number one question I get asked as a coach is how do you coach your wife? <laughs> <laughs> subtly is play to this part of it. And if you don't see it as a coach, you will play to it, at least unconsciously, and you're sort of failing a test right there. Um, one person, um, leave all these people in name, and, and
So it would come down to not did you win this tournament or this title, and there were times that she, she would win on TV and we'd have a, a, a sort of a nice moment of reflection, and there was one time she won and she played badly and won the title. And we just talked about how, how that didn't feel good to play that way. A little teary, and but between us, it's not like I love you and you throw a good shot and I don't, you don't. And we're good and our relationship is good when, you, when you're playing well, but it's not when it's not. It was like, no. What we are is what we are, and you're never going to have to earn that. You know, the relationship is earned. It just We didn't start off as close as, as we became. But once it was safe, then it was safe to play. Was, uh, any of you who played doubles, which is all of you, you know, you and Lewis going to nationals, whatever it is, once you trust your, your playing partner, which we've been great together and we've been bad together, and once we know that, I don't have to prove to you, if you're proving, then you're not being a champion. And if you're proving to your coach, your energy is not free to play. And so by the time these players are playing for these great college programs and coaches, they're free to play because they're not proving to their coach. I can play, and you have, you know, have faith in me here, let me show you. If they still have to show you what they can